He's the 2009-2010 Gatorade National Boys Player of the Year, Brandon Knight, and he is going to Kentucky. What's going on, Lauren Shahadi? Gary Parrish, our college basketball columnist here with you, breaking it down. And Gary, Brandon Knight, one of the top guards in the country, has chosen to play for Calipari at Kentucky. In his eyes, it was the right move. What about in yours? You know, it's hard to argue against it at this point. I mean, let's look at what's happened over the past few years. Derrick Rose plays point guard for John Calipari. He's the number one pick in the draft. Tyreek Evans plays point guard for John Calipari, the top five pick. John Wall plays point guard for John Calipari. He will be the number one pick in this draft. So um, if the sales pitch is, listen, you come play for me, you'll play point guard for me, you'll be a one-and-done guy and a guaranteed top five pick, it's happened three straight years, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, why it wouldn't happen with Brandon Knight. And, uh, you know, again, Brandon had a lot of opportunities on the table. He could have gone and played uh, practically anywhere, but uh, – Playing point guard for John Calipari has been a uh, – there's a trend that's developed. It, it will get you to the NBA, and it will get you there quickly. And uh, I think Brandon will be the fourth in a row. You say he could have gone anywhere. He's a South Florida guy, and he definitely could have gone to Gainesville for the Florida Gators. Why didn't they close that deal? You know, I, I think it's, it's, been this, it's been headed this direction for a long time. I wrote even last summer that, you know, uh, Knight would eventually uh, be with Kentucky. And, you know, I've had conversations with John Calipari, not specifically about Brandon Knight, but about being able to look at a kid and his parents and tell them, "Listen, uh, look at you know, look at where Derrick Rose is now. Look at where Tyreek Evans is now. Look at where John Wall is going to be. This is not an accident. I'm not going to hold your kid back. I'm not going to try to say that he needs to develop. Your kid's good enough to be a pro under the current system. He needs to go to college for a year because he can't end the draft now. My my history suggests." that I'm not going to screw this up. Ask Tyreek Evans if I screwed it up. Ask John Wall if I screwed it up. Ask Derrick Rose if I screwed it up. If you want to guarantee that your kid's a millionaire and in the NBA 12 months from now, I'm the guy to play for. Now, the argument against that, if you're Billy Donovan, is, listen, John Wall, Tyreek Evans, and Derrick Rose could have played at Penn State and they would have been one-year uh, college players and, and lottery picks. Um, but, again, you sell what you can sell, and, and John Calipari has done a – a really good job of selling this, and it seems to be working. Would this not have happened if John Wall had not left to the NBA? That spot wouldn't have been there for him to be the star, Gary. Oh, yeah. I, I think if Wall would have been there, then, yeah, Knight would have probably looked elsewhere. But Wall was never going to be there. And it, just as Tyreek Evans was never going to be there for John Wall, just as Derrick Rose was never going to be there for Tyreek Evans. I mean, this is, you know, Cal has his flaws. There are no question, And they've been well documented. But, he, you know, he does not have a history of holding guys back or, or trying to, you know, uh, hide them from NBA scouts or trying to, you know, uh, keep them in college for more than one year. He recognizes what he had in John Wall, Tyreek Evans, and Derrick Rose, one of the reasons that they all played for Cal in the first place, one of the reasons, not the only, but one of the reasons is because they know that, you know, he is, a, he is considered the premier one-and-done coach in America. So, uh, I, I, you know, I think it was important for, and you saw all the Kentucky guys make their announcements pretty early, I think it was important for Cal to get it on the record. John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, um, you know, Daniel Orton, Eric Bledsoe, Patrick Patterson, they are all gone and moving on because he's now trying to recruit for next year and he's involved with, with a handful of really good players in, in, uh, in addition to Brandon Knight. Uh, but, uh, again, I don't, think that, I don't think that ever really entered the conversation because nobody um, ever assumed John Wall would be a sophomore in college. Calipari is a one-and-done coach. Gary, I understand that. But what does that mean for building a program at Kentucky? What does that have to say for that? Well, you know, people have now looked at it as, you know, what does it say about the one-and-done guys that they lost in the Elite Eight? I would counter that with they won the SEC, they won the SEC tournament, they were a one seed, and they were one of the most successful teams in the country this year, and at one point the favorite to win the national championship, particularly after Kansas lost. So if that's, you know, if that's what one-and-dones get you, um, seems okay with me. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, in that tournament, as we've seen, whether it's Kansas, whether it's Kentucky, whether it's Syracuse, um, because of the nature of it, it's a 40-minute basketball game, and if you lose it, your your season is finished. Um, you know, and if you if you lose it in your Kansas or Kentucky uh, before the championship game, your your season finishes prematurely. That's the nature of the event. I don't think many people really believe Duke was the best team in the country this year. Duke is the national champion because they happen to win the 65-team tournament. Um, but again, I you know. A few years ago, Derrick Rose had had a you know was the best, a freshman was the best player on a Memphis team that played for the national title. 
Um, Kevin Love was the best player on the UCLA team, a freshman who played for the national title. Greg Oden and Mike Conley, Daquan Cook, were freshmen on an Ohio State team that played for the national title. I don't think that um, you know, freshmen or experience, I don't think that should be the deciding factor in winning a national title, and it rarely will be. The teams with the best players usually win, and if you're a coach who wants to pass on elite-level players, um, you know, to, because you want to balance your classes. Good luck. I'll take the uh, I'll take the pros every time, and, and we'll see where it gets me. Sure, Gary. A couple of phenoms for Kentucky. Add Mike Gilchrist to the list on there. Yeah, he also is committed, and uh, not a surprise that he is going to play for John Calipari. The kid was first quoted when he was 13 years old saying he wanted to play at Memphis because Cal was there at that time, the coach at Memphis. Uh, you know, he's from. Um, the Philly, New Jersey area. So he's, you know, Cal's got strong recruiting ties up there. Um, you know, and most notably, he, you know, William Wesley, the uh, famed uh, power broker in basketball circles, has been tight with the Gilchrist family forever. Gilchrist grew up admiring Dewan Wagner, who, of course, played for Calipari. Um, you know, Gilchrist is close with LeBron James, who's close with Calipari. This has been in the works for. And I'm not exaggerating, four years. So the timing is a little bit of a surprise that he's committing this early, though this is the day that his father died. Uh, or no, this is, this is his father's birthday. His father died when Michael was two years old, and this is his father's birthday. So there's somewhat of a tribute to that. But still, I think, in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a little earlier than most anticipated. Um, but the idea that Mike Gilchrist, um, class of 2011, best prospect, and maybe the best high school player in the country, regardless of class this year, is going to play for John Calipari. And it's just a, it's a tribute to Cal as a coach. Like I said, he, he has his flaws, and they've been well documented. But there aren't many people, and there may not be any other people, who can turn around rosters as quickly as John can. You saw what he did last year when he took the Kentucky job. And, you know, as of today, it looks like he's doing it again. Gil Chris Knight heading to Kentucky for Gary Parrish. I'm Lauren Shahadi. For more on this story, check out the site. We'll talk to you soon.